Alright, so hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to hopefully give you some intuition on the DAISY 853C air rifle. And this is the air rifle that cadets use for marksmanship practices, competitions, and uh, anything uh, marksmanship related. So, uh, this rifle, I'm going to just go over um, the parts of it essentially, how we use it, uh, talk about these images that I've placed over here, and uh, yeah, maybe a little bit about the history of the rifle to begin. Uh, this is the DAISY 853C air rifle. Now the C in air rifle actually stands for competition. So this rifle is used for competition purposes. It was specifically designed to put a four and a half meter, uh, millimeter pellet through a piece of paper. So uh, this is what it looks like essentially. Over here are some cadets using it and uh, this is the rifle disassembled. Um, so I'll start a bit by explaining the parts of the rifle. So this entire wooden part here, the, this whole wooden part is what we call the stock. Stock. That's essentially what uh, you, you hold on to and it's nothing but a wooden frame that holds the more uh, critical parts of the rifle and you can see it over here uh, disassembled. Also we have, let me just change color here for a second. We have at the back, this is the part that goes on your shoulder, we have uh, the butt plate. Butt plate. Now it's important not to get the butt plate confused with these spacers beside it. These are separate pieces called spacers. Now depending on how tall you are, you add or remove spacers. Uh, I'm five foot eight and I shoot with two spacers, um, similar to this rifle's configuration right now. Um, but you can adjust that based on your height and whatever. There's just two screws in the back and you can undo it. Uh, over here uh, we have um, down to the uh, firing mechanism of the rifle we have the trigger guard. Let me just put an arrow there. The trigger whoops trigger guard and I can bet you can guess what that protects essentially. That's the tr it protects the trigger so that you don't uh, fire the rifle accidentally. And to the right of the trigger guard, we can see, uh, I'm gonna do this with the same color. You can see we have the pump. Now this is a single pump pneumatic rifle. And what that means is that you open the rifle like this, the pump swings open, goes to about here, makes an angle here, and that's, uh, that's essentially the swing of the pump and then you close it and that's all you need to do to, um, to, to pump the rifle. Some rifles you need to pump it several times to get enough uh, air in the chamber, but the 853C you'll need to pump it once. Um, and then, so you've pumped the rifle and now you're going to go put the pellet into the next part of the rifle, which is the chamber. The chamber, right? The pellets that we use for the DAISY 853 are 4.5 millimeter. Um, I guess you they're, they're flat head pellets. They kind of look like this. There's the pellet in the front. They go around sort of like this. And the, there's, I mean, there's several different kinds of pellets that you can use for these rifles, but we use the flat head ones because they cut through paper the best. So that's our paper target there. The pellet's going, punches through, and it makes a nice clean hole around the pellet so you know where it hit on the target. So you place your pellet uh, into the chamber right here. Okay, so you've pumped the rifle, you place your pellet in the chamber, and now what you're going to do is you're going to close the bolt. And the bolt is actually a little... Uh, handle sort of thing situated right there. So you're going to push that forward and that pushes the pellet into the chamber right here ready to be fired. So I'll label that as the bolt. Bolt. Okay. So now let's let's see. We've, we've pumped our rifle. We put the pellet in the chamber, close the bolt. What we need to make sure now to do, the only thing left before this rifle will actually fire is to check to see that the safety is off. So our safety is a little black button right there. 
and there's two uh, you can push the black button on both sides of the trigger guard on one side when it's pushed one way you'll see that the circle around the safety here if I can draw it here imagine this is the safety button okay and this is what you see this is the trigger guard if this is actually no you know what I'm gonna draw it in the actual color here if this is black that means that the rifle's safe. It's not going to fire no matter how hard you pull on the trigger, the rifle's not going to do anything. And that's when uh, uh, when a seize fire is called or something like that, we always want to make sure that our safety is on black. But let's say uh, we want to fire the rifle. Say this is the trigger guard. Actually, no, forget that. We'll draw it on the other side. This is the safety. And now what you're going to see is you're going to see on the other side you're going to see red and the common expression is red you're dead so if you see red you know that the rifle is going to fire and you'll never see both of these at the same time it's one or the other and by flicking the safety in between the trigger guard you'll be able to tell uh, how the rifle is, a, is adjusted in that sense so that's the firing uh, portion of the rifle so now you have the safety off you're going to pull the trigger the rifle fires now let's follow the path of the bullet here okay so it's gonna fire down the barrel of the rifle so we know that this extended portion here is the barrel of the rifle and the barrel actually serves an important purpose in ensuring the accuracy of the rifle if you actually look inside a barrel okay let's draw a barrel here What you'll notice is that even in air rifles, this is where they get their name from, the barrel is rifled. There's essentially uh, rings or sort of, um, uh, it's the barrel is being carved in a specific uh, manner that when a bullet travels, or a pellet as I should say, travels down the, uh, the barrel, it will actually start to rotate. It will rotate down the barrel. And as the pellet spins, that keeps it going on a straight path such that if you aim it at a specific, whoops, sorry, I just hit the microphone with my pen. Uh, when you aim it at a specific place, that's, that's actually where it's going to hit on the target. Whoops, whoops. Okay, so the rifle travel, uh, the pellet travels down the barrel and it leaves the muzzle of the rifle. This is the muzzle, muzzle. And that's essentially the opening of the barrel and then the uh, the rifle, or sorry, the pellet, my bad, just goes out the front end like that. But you can see the muzzle actually is kind of uh, in, enlarged compared to the rest of the barrel, and that's because it's a counterweight. So it really helps to have that counterweight on the end of the rifle so that this part over here isn't too heavy and the whole uh, rifle is balanced. So uh, that's essentially the parts of the rifle that are used in the firing process of the pellet, but what do we use to make sure we know we're shooting at the place that we want to shoot at? Well, we're going to use the sights, and I'll just change my color again once more. Um, the sights, as I said, are what we use when we when, when we aim the uh, the pellet to ensure it's as accurate as possible. And what you're going to do, you're going to look through the front sight or sorry, I guess this is the rear sight, rear sight. And you're going to align, what you'll see through the rear sight is you're gonna see a circle. And then in the front sight, which is here, front sight, you'll see a smaller circle. So what you have to do is you have to align the large circle with the small circle and then eventually with your target okay and once you have all those three rings in alignment you slowly pull the trigger and hopefully your pellet will go in the exact place that you look at it but say for example you shoot the pellet and you want it to end up here but the pellet ends up figuratively speaking if this were the whole target and this is where you want to shoot at what if the pellet ends up here is your rifle broken 
Well, no. The only problem with your rifle is that the sight isn't adjusted properly. So, depending on the placement of the sight on the, ri on the rifle, um, when it's initially installed, not every rifle is the same, and not every shooter is the same. So, when one person looks through the f rear sight to the front sight to the target, it's going to actually vary on where the pellet will actually hit the paper based on what that shooter sees. So in order to make sure that the uh, pellet ends up uh, where we want it to be on the target, there's actually sighting knobs on the sight to adjust um, the uh, sight right and left such that the pellet goes uh, where we want it to go. So say, say this pellet ended up here, I, if I was sighting the person shooting, I might say, okay, turn your sight four clicks left and three clicks down or something like that. And if we have an accurate enough shooter, hopefully next time uh, the shooter goes to shoot, they'll hit the uh, pellet in the, in the spot that it was intended. So now uh, I'll talk a little bit about how the rifle actually fires. So what happens when we pump the rifle, and we're, I'll use this picture down here because uh, this uh, photo I found on Google shows a pretty good uh, disassembly of the rifle. You can see that there's the pump here, and this is actually, I guess you could call the piston, where the air actually accumulates. So this part right here will actually be fixed to the rifle, so it can pivot, right? Like that. And as you open the pump, this sort of cylinder that slides in the piston opens up so that the piston can accumulate with air. Then when we close the pump, this cylinder will slide back in the piston, but not all the way. So say it will open to about this much, but then it will close to about here. So what that actually does is it takes all this volume of air, right, that we accumulated when the, uh, when the, uh, pump was open, so we've created a low pressure, all the air comes in here, and then what happens is when we close the pump, the cylinder slides forward and compresses the air into this little tiny pocket right here. So then what happens, this mechanism is actually situated about here on the rifle, right? So this is kind of, it should be about there. What happens at this point is say the safety's off, <coughs> the bolt's closed, uh, everything's all ready to go like that. As soon as we pull the trigger, what actually happens is this air that's accumulated in this tiny space is released, sent this way, and it pushes the pellet right here through the barrel. And that's how it works, essentially. Uh, so I hope that gives you a little bit of intuition on how uh, an air rifle will actually work. And this is sort of the setup that uh, you'll pro commonly see that's used in cadets. So you see there's we have multiple shooters here. This person's actually using a sling. This, this rope that he has between the rifle and his arm is actually called the sling. And what a sling does is it helps the rifle be uh, more steady when the shooter holds it. Essentially it takes a lot of the weight of the rifle uh, away from the shooter's forearm and more on that, that rope there. Um, and that really helps to uh, steady the rifle. We also have uh, a man up here. You can see the RSO, his nice um, brassard there. It says RSO, which stands for Range Safety Officer. And no matter where you shoot in the cadet program, we'll always have an RSO uh, on duty to ensure the uh, cadet safety, everyone's safety that, uh, that is in operation with the air rifle and uh, of course everyone around at that time. So anyways, that about wraps up the video for me. Uh, I hope you have now some uh, good uh, knowledge on the DAISY 8, 853C air rifle and uh, how it works, the parts, how the pellet fires and somewhat of an idea of the uh, operations that cadets go through with the uh, with the air rifle. Uh, one fun fact before I leave: uh, Daisy, the manufacturer of the air rifle, used to sell windmills, and they would give free air rifles to people that bought their windmills. But then the rifles became so popular that they stopped selling windmills and start selling rifles. So that's a pretty fun fact. 
Anyways, uh, have a good day and thanks for watching.